It's been a minute since I've done a testing new makeup video. I feel like this year I have just been focused on using a lot of the products that I already have. But today we're gonna take a little pause from that to try out some new pretty hyped up products. We're gonna test this out from Glow Recipe. I've been seeing this everywhere. It's their new blurring primer. Elf launched the most random collab yet. Like we thought Chipotle and Dunkin' Donuts was random, but they just collabed with American Eagle the clothing company. So we're gonna try these out. Sigma is about to launch cream blushes, so I'm very eager to try this. Also, I've got some Jones Road. I've been testing out a little bit, but we'll try out some more today. If you can't tell, I'm pretty excited, so let's jump right into it. Okay, I'm already starting off quite zoomed in so we can try these out for primer. So this is from Glow Recipe. It's kind of supposed to be skincare makeup hybrid. This is their Strawberry BHA Pore Smooth Blur Drops. So, I'm really intrigued about the BHA part of this because BHA is wonderful for acne, which I do struggle with, but I, I wonder if using this on a consistent basis could be kind of irritating to my skin. I wonder how this is going to affect the other skincare products that I can use in my routine because the amount of exfoliating products that I use does of course dictate the other skincare steps and products I can use. So I'm a little bit intrigued about this. I know BHA in general tends to be a little bit more gentle and it can be tolerated for daily use, but I'm intrigued to see. I have not tried this on my face yet. It doesn't really have a scent, which I expected to because Glow Recipe typically does, but I have just like put this on the back of my hand and smoothed it out and it felt very smooth, I will say that. It's also really interesting to me just how much hype I've been seeing this particular product get because I think that really speaks to how glowy makeup trends have been for the last few years and how we're kind of starting to see a shift back into like a softer matte finish because if I think back to like the 2016 era, I don't think we would have heard very much about this just because it's like, okay, another blurring primer. But right now we have only seen glowy products. So it's like, oh wow, something smoothing. I do feel like a little bit of tingling right now. And I don't want to fully blame that on the product and say like, oh my gosh, it's, I don't know. Because lately I think I kind of damaged my skin barrier a little bit. I've been really peely. And so even sometimes lately applying like a moisturizer, I can feel some tingling just because my skin is irritated. So I don't want to say that this product is like doing anything too much, but I'll, I'll keep an eye on it and let you know. That being said, I do kind of love the concept of like makeup and skincare together. Funny enough, I'm the opposite when a makeup brand starts launching skincare. I'm like, oh my gosh, don't do that. But when a skincare brand launches makeup, I love that. <laughs> but the foundation I'm wearing today is the one I've been wearing pretty much every day recently, and it's the Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. I have mine in the shade SF 1.5. I wanted to use this in particular just because I have been using it so much lately, and whenever I'm testing out a new primer, I always try to pair that with a foundation that I'm incredibly familiar with so that we can see how they're gonna interact together because if I were to use like a brand new foundation today, that would not be helpful at all because we wouldn't know what's doing what. I'm just going in with a tiny bit more to get a bit of, just to build up the coverage a little bit. This foundation is definitely more on the light coverage side with just one thin application. I will say though, I'm noticing just the beginnings of some dryness on my chin and we'll see how this wears throughout the rest of the day. I'll put some updates in a pinned comment for you guys because I do have plans after this. I'm filming this around 2 p.m., but I'll definitely have this on for at least eight hours. So I'll, I'll add some final thoughts in a pinned comment later so we can see, but I can I have a feeling I'm gonna get some like flaking and, pat and like patchiness right here because I can already see it starting, but I, that's been happening to me a lot lately. I, it's just my skin right now. Okay, for concealer, the one I've been using lately is the new one from Flower Beauty, and I was using the shade Fair, which was the one I originally purchased, and I mentioned to you guys that this was just like a weird shade match for me, so now I've discovered vanilla is a better option for me. So let's go in with vanilla. I have been using this concealer pretty much every day lately. It's definitely one of my new favorites. I would say it is one of the best drugstore concealers that I've found if you're looking for something that just looks quite natural still. Like it's definitely not dry on the under eyes, but it's also not too glowy. Sometimes concealers that claim to not be dry almost 
for me i find to be like too thick and heavy because they almost have a bit of sheen to them whereas this one i find to be very lightweight but i still get the coverage that i'm after okay wait i feel like my skin is burning and right here like it looks red do you see that okay i just turned my brightness like way way down but do you see i don't know if you can see how red it is okay wait i turned the brightness up a tiny bit so you so we're not like in the dark but do you see what i mean I'm gonna try to keep going, but I might have to wash this off. Okay, but for now, let's try the blush. This is from Sigma. This is their cream blush in the shade Pashmina. They launched these in four shades, but they didn't come out yet. They're coming very soon. And let's see. I didn't even know they, they were coming out with these. So I think I'm gonna try to apply this with my 112 from BK Beauty. This is like, normally I use this brush for my cream contour and bronzer, but today let's try it for the blush i feel like it's something weird is happening with the foundation and i'm having a hard time pinpointing if it is the blush or if it's from the primer because maybe these products just are not meshing well together and maybe maybe i would like this better with a different combo but that's always the the tough part for me with a cream blush is finding one that's not gonna make my foundation pick up or do weird things and right now pretty much okay I'm gonna have to redo my makeup so much for being able to wear this makeup out tonight because that is not gonna happen I'll tell you that already but wherever I'm putting the blush there's like no longer foundation there and I'm like which one of you is creating this problem. Is it you or is it you? I'm kind of bummed about this though because even the foundation in general I think is such a beautiful foundation. Typically like the way it lays on my skin I've really been loving it lately but it's not really vibing with this I don't feel like. Like the blush looks pretty and dewy but the foundation is fully gone so that's a bummer, but let's try to put in some powder. This is actually also from Sigma. This is their Soft Focus Setting Powder, and I have mine in the lightest shade. And I'm just going to take a little triangle puff and set this down. Yeah, I really feel like my face is burning right now, you guys. Like, right around here. And I, like I was saying, I do think I kind of disrupted my barrier recently because a lot of products just haven't been feeling wonderful on my skin. But, um... When I do feel that, it's just for the immediate, you know, it goes away pretty quickly. Whereas right now, I feel like I applied that long enough ago that I'm a little concerned that I still feel some tingling. Wow, and I was so excited to test new products today. I was like, these all look really promising. I think this is going to be a pretty look, but maybe not. Maybe not. And I was going to film another video after this, but again maybe not but let's go with this i have used this before and have been enjoying it this is from um jones road this is their bronzer this is the shade light tan i believe this is the second lightest shade this is the first lightest that's not rosy undertone so they do have one shade that leans a little bit kind of pinky i've heard kind of mixed things about that shade in particular but this one i've actually really been enjoying i think it is incredibly natural and it's pretty pigmented if you aren't careful like if you swirl your brush in here you're gonna get a lot of product so i try to only dip in like once or twice and then kind of tap off the excess because you can get a lot okay the more i look at my face i'm starting to think that the problem is the primer and maybe it's not even just the primer on its own but those two formulations don't work together the primer and the foundation I'm going to take some like up close shots once I finish my makeup and editing Kelly will put them in right here. Hopefully I can really capture just how bad it's peeling because everywhere that the foundation was, it's peeling off of my face. Okay, we're going to go into the palette that I'm very excited about, but also in this American Eagle collection, which we're going to talk about because I'm just like, what in the world is this collab? But... There's also a lip product and it is, wait for it, pH changing, just like everything else right now. Okay, this is actually so cute. One thing I've really nailed on this, it might be the most random collab in the world, but they knocked it out of the park with the packaging. Like this is 
a matte finish. Like this feels very high end. So it's scary in the tube because it's blue, but this is pH changing. So let's see, I wanna apply it now so we can kind of see what color it's gonna turn into and how the color is gonna last. So that way we'll have it on for a while. Whereas if I put it on at the end, it's only on for a few seconds. So hopefully we'll get more of an idea. I feel like today I'm really just committing to the makeup possibly being horrible because the foundation is peeling off my face. I'm applying a blue lipstick right now. Okay, wait, do you see this? There's like chunks of the blue on my lip. You have to blend it out and it's gone now, but I wanna note that. Not that that's like the end of the world or anything, but I would say that's probably not a product you can just apply without a mirror because the blue kind of comes off and stays. I normally I really do like pH changing lip products. It's so funny because a few years ago I hated them, but now I'm really into them. So we'll see what color this turns. You can absolutely see that blue undertone though. I feel like the color is pulling incredibly blue, but speaking of blue, let's jump into this random, random, random palette. So let's start off with how adorable the packaging is. Everything is jeans themed, of course, because it's American Eagle, but you have this little tag, which is just like a clothing tag. And that's how you pull this out. Even this little carton that it comes in, it's, it's very similar to when you purchase their jeans from what I can remember. I haven't bought jeans from American Eagle in a few years, but I used to be obsessed with American Eagle. I mean, I feel like probably if you're around my age, I'm 29, you probably also had your American Eagle phase. So I think this is like a fun nostalgic thing. I mean, it's not that nostalgic. The brand does still exist, but it's random. I'll say that. Um, here is the palette. I actually think it's really pretty for how just like weird it is. I think they did a wonderful job selecting these colors. I do think that they feel like blue jeans. That being said, I don't know why we needed this, but I kind of am into it in a weird way. I don't know, let's try it. I wanna start with the blues. I'm not as interested in the browns because in my experience, browns and any more neutral shade, they tend to be easier to formulate. So I don't doubt that those are probably a good quality, but blues are very hard to formulate. So that's where I feel like we really need to start. So let's take this more like pastel cerulean in the name, in the name, that doesn't make sense, but by the name mom jeans. And then I'm gonna work this into my crease. Okay, hold on. At first, it really looked like it picked up nothing on the brush. I I feel like you have to swirl in the pan a little bit. There we go. Okay, the look, is it gonna be cute? I don't know, you guys. We're gonna, we're, we're having fun. I'm kind of at the point where I'm like, I'm gonna have to wash my makeup off anyways, so why try to do a safe eye look? Like, let's, let's lean into the blue. So there's that. I would say it looks like moderately patchy. That could be user error, but I think in general, blues are incredibly hard to formulate. I don't think this is any um, more or less patchy than most blues I've used, I'll say that. Let's try to kind of build the outer corner with the shade Indigo. I also think it's really precious that the design that's pressed into each pan is the design from their jeans like the print that goes on the pockets. Let me tell you, when I was in high school, that was the time that like, if you were cool, you had American Eagle jeans and like I needed my pocket to have that design. And I remember there was a little bit there where they changed the pocket design. Do you guys remember that? It was like, I wanna say it was like a swoop or something. And when they did that, I remember I was like, well, I don't want the new swoop design. I want this, this shape. If you guys have been subscribed to my channel for a while, I I used to be a lot more into very bold, colorful looks like this, probably maybe four or so years ago. And this is definitely bringing me back to that era. I do feel out of practice using incredibly bright eyeshadow shades like this. So, you know, work with me. I will say though, even this darker blue, like the, the payoff is actually pretty wonderful. Okay, so I went a little overboard. What we're gonna do is take the shade High Rise, which is a lighter shade, somewhat close to my skin tone. And I'm gonna use this to help to fade that really kind of harsh seam that we create. Oh, seam, get it? A pants pun. My face just looks so dry right now, you guys. I, I know I feel like I just keep going back to that primer, but I, I don't think it's for anyone with dry skin, which 
maybe was obvious, but I do think sometimes there are mattifying products that can work well on dry skin types without being too harsh. But based on first impressions, I don't think that this is one. That being said though, if you have oily skin, you might be watching this like, hmm, I'm intrigued. But I will say my makeup, my, my base looks very bad. Actually, I'm gonna be honest, maybe my whole face kind of looks better now. Is it cute? Maybe not, but I'm having fun. Let's take major flare which is this shade right here and darken up the lash line it's so funny guys i just bought like flare bell bottom jeans the other day i actually bought them at the thrift store and i i just know like my younger self would think they were the coolest jeans ever so it's so funny for me at almost 30, like I didn't think I'd be so excited about a pair of like super flared bell bottoms. I am just taking this shadow on the outer corner and then taking my nail to make a wing. I've been doing this so much lately, not even a full on wing, really just to like extend the shadow and drag it out. Let's keep going. I kind of want to use this shade to die for i think it looks really fun and i'm just applying that all over the lid i think that is so pretty i'm also curious blues can stain so since i'm gonna be washing this makeup off shortly after i do it i'm gonna pop on the screen i'll let you know did it stain did it not we'll see future kelly let us know the shimmery vise very pigmented very pretty honestly this look might have been better had I just skipped the matte blues, to be honest, but that's okay. I actually think had I opted for the browns in the crease and then went along with this shade on the lid, it would have looked better. Like, I, I don't think I'd have a lot of this patchiness right here, but that being said, again, browns are typically good. I want to see how the blues are. Let's do one more shimmer, though. Let's do a little bit of 90s vibes right here, which seems to be more of like a chunky shimmer oh that's pretty i think this palette honestly if you're a colorful eyeshadow lover and you are skilled with blues you could probably make a much better look than i am currently making like the shimmers in this are very good i will say that like this is applying so pretty i just added mascara you know it's definitely a look it's not my best look but it is a look from like far away maybe <laughs> Now we did already do the lip, but I'm gonna add a little bit of lip liner because a lot of times if I'm using a pH changing lip, I like to do lip liner on top. So this is Nutmeg from NYX. Okay, you guys, um, easily my least favorite makeup look I've done in a while. Um, honestly, I was pretty let down by a lot of these. If you've tried any of them, let me know your thoughts down below. I will keep testing them out and update you soon. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.